Hello. Today we're going to learn how to use MOS from Stanford. MOS stands for Measure Software Similarity and lets teachers compare students' code to see if they've plagiarized from each other. We're also going to learn how to use a Windows GUI created by Shane May that will let us submit and retrieve our results. We'll start by going to the MOS main page. You can either type in this URL or you can go to Google and type in MOSS Stanford and choose the first result. Now that we're here, we're going to scroll down and download the Windows GUI by Shane May. So we'll click on a GUI for Windows. Then we'll scroll down and click Clone or Download. And then we'll click on Download Zip. And then you can save that wherever you want. You'll have to uncompress it later. Next, we're going to have to download Visual Studio. Easiest way to get here is to go to Google, type in Visual Studio Community, and click the first result. Visual Studio Community is a free edition of Visual Studio. We'll click Download VS Community 2017 and save it where we want. The installation for this will take a little while, so be prepared to wait. Finally, we're going to download FileSeq. FileSeq is not required, but I find it helps my workflow, and I'm going to demonstrate that a little later on. You can go to FileSeq.ca, click Download, and you can download a copy of FileSeq either free or pro. You'll want to install FileSeq in Visual Studio on your own. We'll go over how to install and configure the GUI to submit files to MOS a little later, but first let's talk about how to organize our files. So I've got my folder Guessing Game Project. This is the name of my project. I go inside here and I've got a folder for each of my students. And inside each of these folders is the files that are part of their submission for Guessing Game Project. Let's go into Alyssa Innocent. Now, since this is a Java program, we only want to submit the .java files. If you're using another language, it'll be a little different, but the same concept. We want to clear everything else out. So, we're going to start by making sure we can see all the files in the folder and what all their file types are. So I'm going to go to Start. I'm going to type in File, Explorer, Options. Select that. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to View. Then I'm going to click Show Hidden Files. And then I'm going to uncheck Hide Extensions for Known File Types and hit OK. So we notice first our desktop INAI file, which will probably be in every folder appears. And we see also we've got our class files. That's a compiled version of our .java source code and a zip file that the .java files were originally in before I uncompressed them. We can either go folder by folder and delete all these, but we're going to use file seek to do it a little quicker. So I'm going to go to start. I'm going to type in file seek. So I'm going to say I want to be in the guessing game project because that's where all the project files are. Next, I want to include files. I want to search for all zip files, class files, and INI files. And since I want to search for these three types at once, I separate the star.zip, star.class, star.ini with a vertical bar. So I'm going to hit search. And then I've got all the zip, class, and INI files. I'm going to select them all. I'm going to hit delete. Yes. And now I go back to my folder. And everything but the .java files is gone in all of the students' folders. Next, we're going to look at how do we set up the actual program to submit the files to MOS. I've downloaded the MOS GUI into a folder called MOS. So I'm going to open that up. We see it's in a zip file. I'm going to right click on it, say Extract All, and hit Extract. And now I've got a folder, Moss App Master. I'm going to go in here, double click on mossapp.sln, and it's going to load it up in Visual Studio. We just get this warning, we hit OK.
you may get this error message. I find saying change the target to .NET Framework will work. So I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to hit Start. In my case, it gives me an error message. I'll show you how to fix this. I'm going to say no. And it's telling me unable to find manifest signing certificate in the certificate store. So I'm going to go over here, left click on the Moss app. It says C Sharp there. Right click on it. Go to Properties. Go down to Signing. Uncheck Sign the Click One Manifest. Then I'm going to run it again. It'll give me another warning. I hit OK. And now here's the interface. We'll talk about how we use the interface next. Our next step is to create an account. We're going to click on the Get User ID tab. I'm going to type in my email address. In this case, I'm using test123 at hotmail.com. And then the program will tell us exactly what email we have to send. We have to send it to the address moss at moss.stanford.edu. The first line of the body will say register user, one word, then mail, and then whatever our email address is. You don't need to use the Get User ID tab, but this helps you to know exactly what to send in the email. We will receive an email pretty quickly, and buried in the script attached will be your user ID. If you want to search for it, search for user ID, it's one word, all lowercase. You'll copy the number, then you'll click on submission info, paste it into the user ID text box. Next, we're going to look at some of the text boxes, drop downs, and buttons and discuss what they do. Most of the time, if you highlight your cursor over the label, it will give you an explanation. What option M does is that decides how many times it has to see a string of code before it decides it wasn't plagiarism, but just something that was inherently going to be replicated. I generally set mine pretty high, like 10. If 10 students use the same line of code, it was probably something that's just going to be in every student's program. We have choose base files. This is if you give students a template to work off of. It's going to assume this part is not plagiarized because every student's going to start from the same template. Choose source files. We're going to select the directory that holds the source files. In my case, I have them on the C drive under Guessing Game Project. You can see I've got my subfolders with my four students, and each of those has two Java files that are part of the program. I'm going to hit OK. Every folder with a student's name has one program, even though there's multiple files. So I'm going to choose Use Directory Mode. That means it's going to treat everything in Alyssa Innocent as one program, everything in Chris Copier as one program, and so on. We notice it's listing all the source files. We want to make sure we only have .java files in the case of a Java program, or in the case of another language, only the types of files that you want. Before we hit send, let's talk about the four students. John Q. Student did his own work. Chris Copier copied John Q. Student's work exactly. Sally Sneaky copied John Q. Student's work but to try to cover it up, she changed method names, she changed variable names, in some cases she even changed the data type of variables. Alyssa Innocent did her own work completely. So let's hit send request and see what happens with our result. The program will lock up for a little while until it gets everything done. You may get a firewall alert if you're using semantic or something else. I'm going to choose always allow. We will know that it is finished and ready to proceed when we get a web address here. We can look at it in the in-program browser. I generally prefer to click on it and look at it in my web browser. We can see the matches. John Q. Student matched to Sally Sneaky. Chris Copier matched to Sally Sneaky. And Chris Copier matched to John Q. Student. It shows the percentage of the match. Now normally you're not going to get something this cut and dry. It's going to be something much less than this, and you have to look at the code and make your own judgment about whether it was copied or if it was copied inappropriately. We notice Alyssa Innocent didn't match at all. 
because her code was unique. Let's compare John Q. Student and Sally Sneaky. In this case, we only have one color. Normally, you would have multiple colors. The color coding is used to show you the matches, so we can compare the red in John Q. Students with the red in Sally Sneaky's. And if we had other colors, we could match different parts of the program. We can see that both of these contain both the guessing game file and the playing card file. This is because we selected the use directory mode, so it assumed everything in Alyssa Innocence folder was part of the same program, Chris Copier's folder was part of the same program, and so on. We can look and compare the code. We can see, okay, it starts off kind of the same, different class name. We can see the variable names are changed. We can also look at the code and see the code is pretty much identical logically. So we know that one of these students copied off one of the other ones. Sometimes I look to see which student submitted it first, because that gives me a hint about who did the copying and who copied from the other person. So this is an overview of how we can use this particular GUI to submit files to MOSS and how we can interpret the results.